For doing this video, uh, we do have top 10 NFL tight ends of 2024. Um, the difference with this video is part one has no, uh, you know, is going to combine honorable mentions, um, a really, a really uh, surprising retirement, and uh, a couple of dudes uh, in the countdown. So um, there just isn't enough honorable mentions on this position for me to even put an extra one in there for only three minutes. So. Might as well get it over with and uh, have them kind of stacked up against each other. Um, and then part two, we'll, we'll do, uh, I believe, seven through one instead of uh, five through one. But, you know, anything to kind of make videos uh, a little more compacted. Yeah, I'm excited to see this. Uh, tight ends are very rare, and uh, I'm excited to show you guys what I got here. Yeah, with honorable mention list. Um, and it's going to be Trey McBride, man. Um, yeah, Trey McBride, um, definitely uh, a tight end, a guy that can be on a top ten list. Um, again, there's not much competition between him and some of these other guys. Um, but, you know, I mean, tight ends, while they are scarce, uh, they're athletic. They're frequently athletic, um, you know, great blockers. Some of them are great blockers. Um, they're just another big body uh, receiver, a blanket receiver for the QB. And, you know, the ones that have these guys, I mean, you know, tend to they be putting up some big numbers right now. So it's nice to see tight ends kind of, you know, trying to um, kind of trying to take over, right? Uh, hopefully more tight ends can come into the league and, you know, we can get a more uh, bigger plethora of this list instead of feeling like it's it's too easy in a way for a countdown, right? Uh, but Trey McBride, 24 years old, two years in the league. Two years, $2.83 million on his contract. 17 games played, 81 receptions for 825 yards, three touchdowns, and a fumble. Um, and no playoffs at all for the Cardinals. But this is a guy that they can really build on. It's just one of the really many positive pieces that they got out there. So, I mean, you know, having him there, um, I think it's going to be uh, pretty impactful. And I definitely see um, Trey McBride being a big piece to this team that can go to the playoffs. For, uh, someday, you know. Uh, next on the list, we got Jake Ferguson, man. Uh, Jake Ferguson, um, honorable mention, was not ranked at all the past year. Um, just one of these tight ends that I feel like Dallas kind of comes across and people don't know who they are and they actually become pretty, uh, pretty defined studs out there. Um, and Jake Ferguson's one of those guys that people didn't even know who he was and he just, uh, you know, he took over Dalton Schultz's job, and uh, he did a great job, did a fantastic job. Dak obviously uses him in, in a lot of ways over there. Um, Dallas, like I said, has um, he, honestly very low low key. Um, they got some impressive tight ends that have come through there in their history of their um, history of their sport, you know, in the history of their team. Uh, just, I mean, the fact that, you know, you think about it, um, they have been able to just bring in guys and draft guys that people don't realize they're going to be great, and they turn out to be ballers, man. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Jake Ferguson's 25 years old, two years in the league, or one year in the league, excuse me, uh, two years, $2.085 million on the deal, 17 games played, 71 receptions for 761 receiving yards and five touchdowns. Uh, against Green Bay in the wild card, he had 10 receptions for 93 yards and three touchdowns. So, I mean, kind of their only way of having offense was through him because that was a terrible game for Dallas. Uh, they played terribly. Um, no passion, no uh, drive to even want to win, it felt like. Jake Ferguson, he was a highlight of that. He's a pro bowler this year. Uh, definitely a, a guy that I could see step up even more, and uh, I think his impact will be pretty great in Dallas. Um and I believe that they'll they'll get him the ball a lot more um, this pat this next year, especially uh, you know obviously with CD and stuff is just a secondary option for him. We eye out talent um, for the tight end, and we we look at some young guys that can be in a uh, top ten list, and they're young and they can prove more. Dalton Kincaid is going to come up just because uh, you know they drafted him. Uh, this past like, this past year um, in Buffalo, and I honestly thought Dalton Knox was the guy. I didn't understand why they would even draft Dalton Kincaid. Uh, he definitely showed me why they they needed to draft Dalton Kincaid. Um, 
yeah, just a, a great big tight end that, uh, you know, is a underrated blocker for sure. Um, and, I mean, a guy that can can uh, run his routes and, and can catch uh, catch some, some pretty nice Josh Allen uh, footballs, you know. Uh, definitely a, a nice little, little blanket for Josh Allen, um, even though, you know, he had guys on the outside that he can throw to. Uh, this next year, he's gonna. I think he's gonna have a monster year just because their receiving core looks lackadaisical, uh, honestly. But uh, you know, at the same time, he's he's gonna have a big season. A uh, big part of the success of Buffalo, I think, is gonna run through Dalton Kincaid for sure. Uh, Josh Allen will definitely be looking towards him a lot this year. Um, yeah, Dalton Kincaid, 24 years old, one year in the league, was a rookie last year. Three years, 5.91 million dollars on the contract. 16 games that he played, 73 receptions for 673 yards and two touchdowns, one fumble, one lost um, against Pittsburgh and the Chiefs. He had eight receptions for 104 yards and a touchdown. Uh, no accolades, but uh, this is a guy that you know you got to pay attention to, got to respect him, and uh, I think he's got many years to show what he's uh, capable of doing. Um, how about Kyle Pitts? Uh, he was number seven on this list. Drop down to honorable mention. I know for a lot of people, they're like, why would you even put him at number seven last year? I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I know he had a great uh, rookie campaign, and I thought, ah, you know what, he's going to get out of this. He's going to be fine. Uh, when he didn't have, when he had that sophomore slump, I was like, well, I can't just give him no nod. And, you know, the tight end room in the NFL is not that, um, it's not like, extremely difficult to evaluate just because there's not many of them so you know let's let's give him another try now i'm giving him the honorable mention um even though i will say you know this man did not play with the best uh qbs that you can possibly have you know atlanta had a tough situation and when you have desmond ritter throwing you the ball um or when you had your sophomore slump where he didn't really get to see many targets i mean you know i can't really blame the guy uh, but it is to the point where Kirk Cousins, we'll see if he throws him the ball, uh, is he going to be that guy? Or are we looking at a guy that was, you know, looked at as one of the best tight end prospects probably ever or in a long time, and he's just a bust at that point, which would be sad just because Kyle Pitts ranks so high and he looks so, looked like he had the utmost upside, you know. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens with him. He's a mystery. 23 years old though three years in the league two years 16.01 million dollars on the contract 17 games that he played 53 receptions for 667 yards and three touchdowns um yeah i mean no playoffs or nothing like that no accolades but will we get a kyle pitts that we can see and actually say yep this guy is a stud this guy is a star he's a superstar in the making and you know or were we gonna see a, a kyle pitts that we're like he's a bust and you know hopefully that's not the case uh, it's just time will tell. We even move on to uh, the top ten list. Uh, let's look at a, a guy that was a shock of a retirement, uh, but a retirement nonetheless, and a person that you got to say happy to uh, be fully retired, and that's Darren Waller, man. Um, I believe this year he would have been 31, 32 years old. Um, Still had some time left, I feel like. I mean, in his prime, dominant, um, almost uncoverable. Um, he was definitely up there with the George Kittles and the Travis Kelseys. I mean, he was just there. He was one of those guys. Um, I know he had a down year. Um, I know it's been very inconsistent, but his story is amazing with his drug use and him being away from that and, you know, paying attention to his life and, and football. And what he did for the Raiders Nation, I mean, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal job on his part. Just overall a guy that you just got to look at and be like, yep, now we got to give him props and, and make sure that he knows that he, at one point this man was a dog. So um, it's sad to see him go. I mean, honestly, he just had a divorce recently from Kelsey Plum, um, and he said to himself he's just not feeling it. Had almost a uh, life-threatening um you know, event happened to him, which uh, seemed like it might have been an anxiety attack. Um, but, I mean, this is a guy that uh, definitely deserves his flowers. And uh, while he might not go to Ken, which I don't believe so with the numbers, he's still going to be missed. And he's still going to be a guy that we, we could say that we watched um, 
ball out for a good three or four years. Um, just to know he was a pro bowler and he was also third on comeback player of the year in 2019. Uh, again, just a stud and uh, yeah, a guy that uh, will be missed, I feel like. Uh, definitely has the tight end room. Uh, the tight end talent be a little thin um, with missing out on him as well. But happy retirement to Darren Waller and I do wish him the best. We're moving on to the top 10, and number 10, Dalton Schultz, dude. Last year, not even ranked. Um, a guy that played in Dallas and had a pretty good year and uh, you know, kind of came out of nowhere for sure. Um, definitely a guy that, uh, you know, we, we could see impacting a franchise. And, I mean, he did just that when going to Houston, and he's been doing that ever since. He's given C.J. Stroud a, a nice little comfort, uh, comfort of a blanket over there. Uh, a guy that you know will be able to catch the ball is reliable great, great run runner a good run blocker for sure um, and you know with him being there and then all those weapons this team uh, definitely can make a very deep playoff run so it's it's a uh, it's nice having a reliable tight end Houston's got that and Dalton Schultz um, definitely deserving of being in this countdown now he's 27 years old seven years of the league he's got three years 36 million dollars on the contract 15 games he played, 59 receptions for 635 yards, 5 touchdowns, 1 fumble, 1 loss against the Browns and the Ravens. He had 6 receptions for 80 yards and a touchdown. Uh, no accolades, but uh, he will be a pro bowler. I do see that. Um, all pro, it's kind of hard to say that just because they're just, it's been dominated by Kelsey and Kittle. But, uh, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, will put up some good numbers, and uh, I hope to see him succeed again this year. At number nine, we got David Njoku, another guy that was not ranked last year, um, but has made his way into the countdown respectfully. Um, yeah, he put up a great, great stat line this past year. Uh, definitely um, was Deshaun Watson, Joe Flacco, and whichever QB you kept subbing in for Cleveland. That was their go-to man. Uh, that was the guy that they were going to you know, throw the ball to. And, I mean, he's honestly uh, very underrated in his speed. Uh, great pass catcher, great at blocking, and uh, just a really good all-around great, really good tight end in this league. Uh, definitely a guy that you need to look up and uh, you need to research, especially you know on your um, on Sundays, dude. Uh, it's a great fantasy user as well. I just he just got a lot of great potential, and, and it's kind of you know he's been very up and down, up and down his career, and this is really the, the year he really put it together really well, and as you can see, I mean, like, he just had a phenomenal, phenomenal year, um, definitely, uh, and David Njoku, you're looking at it, 27 years old, 7 years in the league, uh, 2 years, $29.75 million on the contract, well deserved, 16 games played, 81 receptions for 882 yards, 6 touchdowns, 2 fumbles, and 2 lost, versus uh, Houston. He had seven receptions for 93 yards. Did not play in the Raven game, which kind of showed I felt like Houston. If he had him, uh, probably would have had a better chance at winning that Baltimore game. Um, and he was a pro bowler, so he put it together well. And I do see him still striving to, to be that guy, and I think he will be that guy. So, yeah, well-deserved to be on this countdown. We close this video out by stopping this at number eight number eight dallas goddard jumped up one spot this past year just basically do the fact that he's been here before and the guys that have been nominated this year were not ranked um and he's just had that level of consistency to go up another ranking um definitely an x factor in the philly offense everyone pays attention to uh aj brown and everyone does pay attention to um you know uh Devontae smith um, but they don't really recognize just how important Dallas Goddard really is. He's definitely had important, um, dr you know, drive save like save drive like drive saving plays, and uh, it's just the fact that you know he is a safety blanket for Jalen Hurts. You know, he doesn't find anyone downfield. He's going to find Dallas Goddard up the middle, and it's a big receiver. It's a big big receiver pretty much at that point, and uh, he definitely will be able to take hits. He has done it before. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just a guy that, uh, 
people do need to pay attention to. And I know Philadelphia fans love him. So um, Dallas Goddard, you know, 29 years old, six years in the league. He has two years, $28.5 million in the contract. Played 14 games, 59 receptions for 592 yards and three touchdowns. Against Tampa Bay in the wild card, he had four receptions for 21 yards and a touchdown. He's able to be effective in that game, regardless of that blowout. Um, again, he is just he is impactful for his team, and he's impactful to be on this list, regardless of him missing games. But he does it at a consistent season, and I'm not expecting anything short of what he can do. I, I definitely would like to see him produce even more, and, and I hope he does. I hope he has another great season this past year.